I'd like to welcome our speaker from Hungary. Krzysztof Kerekes is a C++ software engineer at Graphisoft SE. Uh, he worked as an intern there for two years and then continued on after graduating from the university. He took a dip into base infrastructure development and later explored the world of feature projects to take a turn in each aspect of software. He loves taking initiative to make processes better, more efficient and discover bottlenecks in developing large-scale software. Closer to home, uh, Christoph says that normally buildings are either beautiful or safe and what he's trying to do in life is to write decent software to make buildings uh, to be possible to erect and they would be both beautiful and safe. Ladies and gentlemen, Christoph Kerekes. And to also refer to Raphael, I'm putting all my effort to make a large code base not collapse. So, yeah, not only are the buildings, but code bases as well. Uh, so, hello and chest to everyone. Uh, let me uh, ask you a question. Have you ever wondered what it's like to jump into a code base that is older than you? Or if it would be printed out, it would probably wait like a thousand times more than you. Well, let me take you on a journey and show you how you could utilize yourself as best as you can from the beginning. So, what you want to hear about today is strictly technical stuff like clean code and core guidelines and also how to change the world. You can just Google those stuff or buy some books or check another presentation at Code Dive and get well off with it. So just a bit about me. Uh, as Raphael mentioned, I've been an intern for two years at Graphisoft and full time for the past one and a half year. And I started off in base infrastructures, which actually means we do have our for internal usage uh, containers and algorithms because the code is pre-STL, so we didn't have stuff to work off from. And then I just moved on to feature projects to explore both sides of the coin. And well, that's what I'm doing currently. And for your information, I also love things starting with C, like cars, cats, code dive. And so it's easy enough to guess why I became a C++ developer. And well, let's just put things into context. So uh, our main product is uh, Archicad, which is as the name resembles, uh, a CAD software. And that means a rather hefty uh, business logic. And well, it started off in 82. That is uh, 35 years ago for now. So it's been 35 years of collecting tons, millions of lines of code. And it was born as a Pascal project then tool assistedly transferred to C code and just adjusting little things to make it compile, but you can still find some of the stuff from the Pascal area. And then we swapped to C++ since 93. And it was never rebuilt from scratch. Nobody ever had the courage to press shift delete on the whole source code and start it all over again. And you can find all that history in there. And let's talk about some numbers. Uh, we have 30 million lines of code, which is growing a bit every year. And 250 developers working on it. And uh, that's including quality assurance. Uh, that's not that much for this amount of code. So you really have to get the best out of yourself to make some progress each and every year. And 
I must not say something new with that, but you have 365 days in a year, so you have to use these. And you have all of that plus you, and that is the equation to solve now. Let's see. So actually, the first point is I want to say that your disadvantages are your biggest advantages. You're new to the code, you're new to the environment, you just have to put that fresh mind, your fresh thinking into uh, utility. You have to quickly identify bottlenecks in your codes, tools, processes, and misuses of anything. That there is a phrase in Hungarian that architects use, uh, which is called drawing blindness. Uh, it's something that I could best explain, like you've been working the same on the same thing for so long that you actually think it's good, but you don't notice that it's not really that good anymore. And, well, you don't have that drawing blindness, just use it for your advantages. And, of course, if something is tickling your mind, uh, that something might be wrong about the processes or tools or, or uh, code, well, you are probably are good about that. So just use your spider senses to notice all these weird stuff around the code. Well, the second thing I want to encourage you to do is explore into the code. This will tickle your uh, inner hitchhiker a bit, Whenever you have the chance, just explore the code, uh, get, an, get an idea on how stuff works, but uh, be aware, don't try to understand it all at once, because you will get mad, like really mad. And yeah, some dedication needed at, at this point. Uh, it takes time, it eats up your brain at some point, and well, don't forget to take notes uh, when you actually learn something because you just don't want to relearn it the other day. So that's a top tip from me now. And find things that challenge you because, well, reading code might just not be the most interesting uh, thing. And, well, you can always do some notes about uh, weird patterns used in code or some uh, globals that you have a good idea how to erase from the program. So you just have to find stuff that challenges you and you can go on with your day happily. And well, one thing to also mention is your colleagues are invaluable. Uh, don't be afraid to ask them if you're into exploration of the code uh, and you're stuck and you need that very last bit uh, to understand, uh, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, they've been there for, for years now and they surely know something about that part of the code. If not so, just move on with your day. Someone will answer once. Uh, and of course, you have these problems that your spider senses have found. Uh, don't forget to validate those uh, with your colleagues because, of course, when you put some light uh, on a problem, uh, they will as well realize that uh, you might not have to spend that 20 minutes a day uh, doing something that could be automated or even just 20 minutes a week. It might be frustrating, it might be uh, worthless, uh, anything that can be automated uh, may be handy to do so. And of course, when you found something and you validated it, just propagate your foundations to someone who will actually spread the word, put it on table, you might even put it on table, and then y all you have to do then is just drive the process, stand up for your points, because they are valid and, well, uh, they probably are not just important for you, but also your colleagues. 
you are actually trying to work on something that's making the whole process uh, a bit smoother, a bit more efficient, and so you are actually chasing a good thing, and you just have to stand up for it and be assertive about that. And of course, uh, no innovation or no idea is actually uh, successful if it's not getting done. So, of course, if you found something, you just have to thrive uh, to get it to an end. Like, you don't have to leave it at in half. So, just to sum it all up, uh, when you feel something is wrong, it probably is. Just use your spider senses. Uh, do some exploration into the code, into the tools, maybe possibilities to automate stuff, uh, bottlenecks in the process. Uh, I can't mention this enough, your colleagues are invaluable. And, of course, get your stuff done. And I want to uh, end the presentation with some Gandhi, uh, because it relates really good to large and le legacy code base. So you actually have to be the change you wish to see in the world. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the presentation. Also, those who are tuning in on YouTube, uh, don't forget to subscribe to Code Dive. Thank you. <laughs> but before, Christoph, uh, you go away, I'm going to put your theory to a test, if you don't mind, because, you, well, you said we are supposed to take notes, so I have. And my notes say that colleagues are invaluable and that we are supposed to find a challenge and not be afraid to ask. Okay, so I'm going to follow through. Can I ask you to open um, a blank slide on the laptop, if, if that's possible? And just write one thing down because you said there was there was this this phrase that that, that exists in Hungarian. Yeah. Okay. What was the phrase in English? Uh, drawing blindness. Okay. Can you write it in Hungarian for us? Uh, could could we uh, get the laptop back on the screen, please? Thanks. Well, there's uh, not enough letters to <laughs> express it, but uh, <laughs> you call it Rise Vokshag in Hungarian. Uh huh. So you you want to say it, so it, this is just this one word. Yeah, it's okay. just one word. So you want to say it to us really loudly and really cl really clearly and really slowly, please. Rise Vokshag. Rise Rise Vokshag. Yep. Okay. Rise Vokshag. Close enough. <laughs> okay, now so we, we're going to say it and you, you know, listen out if we correct. So, Roy's Vokshag. Yeah, that's a lot better now. <laughs> Your colleagues are invaluable. Thank you very much, everyone. Christoph. <laughs>